for a little ride. Okay, guys, so we find ourselves here about a block away from MacArthur Park, which would be in that direction. And we are in a parking garage that would otherwise be uh, unremarkable had it not been for the scene that was filmed here uh, very, very quickly. It was just a split second, but nevertheless, it is part of this uh, movie's history. So this is the parking garage where the SWAT team converges together when they're after uh, Johnny Tran and his crew when they're about to go arrest them. That happened here. Right behind me is where they would have converged and gotten all together, and you would have gotten the aerial shot from this direction over here facing this way toward that building. And as a matter of fact, fun fact for you, I wanna give you a couple fun facts here. That building right there, right behind me, that is the driver's apartment in the movie Drive with Ryan Gosling. How cool is that? And if that wasn't cool enough, right below it, in the same building, in the lobby, that was the uh, lobby used in the movie Mystery Men when they fight the Red Eyes and they get their ass kicked when uh, Mr. Furious is walking out with the, uh, the ice pack on his head. That happened right there in the lobby. You can still go and match up the shots because obviously the building itself hasn't changed. So you can match up where they're walking down the stairs in defeat. So how cool is that? And if that wasn't awesome enough, right next door to it is a little apartment building. That little apartment building is home to two floors of parking for its tenants. And one of those parking uh, structures or that one of those levels is named P2. And yes, that is the same P2 from Kill Bill Volume 1 where she goes and picks up the pussy wagon. That would have happened right next door. So next time you're watching these movies, just remember they were filmed within a block of each other. What's up guys? Today I find myself here at another filming location for The Fast and the Furious. Now, what you can see behind me is downtown LA. And you might ask, well, where, where are you? What, is, what location is this? Well, I wanna first preface that where we're standing right now is absolute, absolutely brand new construction. This was not here uh, when the movie was filmed. Actually, where we're standing right now, where the camera is placed, is where the cars would have been entering when they were waiting for Toretto at the meetup when Brian first meets him and wants to put up the Eclipse as collateral for the race where he wants his respect. So right here are the three buildings. The, um, they are the buildings that they would meet up in between. So right now I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a, obviously a better shot of them, but I wanted to come up here to see if I can get a, well, actually I wanna come up here to see if I can get a great shot of them, which I can, and I can't wait to show you what it does look like. And it's pretty cool to be here and to see this and how it, how it looks now. These warehouses, I mean, they still have that old look to them, so they look just like they did in the movie, but there's a lot of new development that they have implemented into them. here to the ground floor and right behind me in this particular alleyway that's where the the car meet would have happened right there and like I said this is the parking gar garage well part of it and it is absolutely gigantic it takes up pretty much the whole width of the three oh yeah no of the, what, two of the buildings actually and it's a very narrow uh, narrow like um, street and a, and a walkway and a sidewalk 
so it's very difficult to frame up the the um, the buildings you know I don't think I can get them all in one shot I can tr give it a try but let, let's see what I can do man but it's so cool to be here take a look let's see if I can get them but yeah here we are the Fast and the Furious meetup like I said right now in a minute we're gonna cross over and we're gonna take a look and maybe we can line up where Brian was would, would have parked where the buster would have parked okay so the way I figured out where Paul Walker possibly could have parked or how, how I'm actually fairly certain that this is where he parked is in the movie we get a shot of something like this and you can count from where this little part of the building like splits the windows I counted 14 windows and in the shot it pans down when Paul Walker is is reversing into his parking spot and he's a little bit more toward us than from the last window I can count on the on the in the scene so my my way of, of thinking would be that it's about two or three windows more past the 14th one that I counted for. So that would put him roughly where this log is. So he would have came in and he would have gone this way forward and then he would have reversed back like this into this spot right here. So that's where Brian's car would have been. The eclipse would have been right about here in this general area and uh, Hector would have been across the way, pretty much right where these plants are at. That's where he would have been posted up on his Honda Civic. And then Ja Rule, I think, I think Ja Rule is to his left. So they would have walked over and they would have been standing roughly in this area right here, all three of them talking about the, about the eclipse and, oh, you, this is your car? Well, I'm standing next to it. You know, that would have happened all right here in this area. And then Toretto would have pulled up with his crew and they would have, posted up I guess obviously in the same general area because they're right next to Brian when they when they do pull up so all of that transpired right here in this area right about here and like I said the camera would cut back and forth and it's very hard to like obviously match up shots where people were exactly standing because as you can see everything kind of just like tessellates it's all the same you know, so I mean, but, but like I said, my general area would be right here. But yeah, here we are. The buildings where the meetup happened, the Fast and the Furious. Okay, well, there you have it, guys. Fast and the Furious meetup right here, right behind me. How awesome is that? We got to come out and see it, man. Finally, I get to see a little piece of my childhood. It's so cool to be here. So surreal to be here, you know, but... Yeah, so that's gonna wrap it up for today. As you can see, I'm burning daylight here and I'm almost out of it. So tomorrow I'm gonna have to pick this up and head out to the other filming locations that I wanna do. I think I've got like one or two more to go. And then the next time I come around, I'm gonna end up doing another two. So this is actually part two of three, even though I know on my first video, I put one of two, just time and mileage on the rental car just didn't allow me to get to where I needed to go. So uh, look forward to part three that's coming in July. Hopefully I can get this one out soon. As of today, I think it's 421, actually. 421, 23 is when this video is being recorded. So hopefully by July, in a couple months, I can have part three out and you can take a look at the remaining locations for the Fast and the Furious. But here we are, the meetup race, guys. Okay, guys, so here we are in downtown LA. And as I was looking for the Quality Cafe to do, um, I, well, it's gonna be three filming locations, actually. I happened to stumble upon another filming location that I wasn't even planning on doing but I recognized it as soon as I saw it right here on 7th and Valencia this right here this intersection is where Paul Walker gets pulled over <laughs> and taken to a, the the house built for Elizabeth Taylor it's right here on this intersection that was so funny as soon as I saw it I knew what it was so let's go take a look and let me see if I can at least let's see if the footage will come out good because again it's pretty late already and the sun is already down so you know but well, let's see what we can do we gotta work on what we got right Okay, so check this out. So right there where that car is, in between the two poles, that's where Sergeant Tanner would have been waiting for Paul Walker. And Brian would have been making his way this way in the Ford Lightning. After he passes this intersection, which is Valencia and 7th, he would have been pulled over somewhere over there and handcuffed. And in the background, you can see this building right here with the two scaffoldings, which is what pretty much gave it away. This and the incline on this street just gave it away that I knew that this was a spot. And I looked back and I saw the hotel that's right there, or the apartments, it is right there. It's dark, so you can't really see it, but right there's the phone number and it says apartments. And that's what gives it away. That's how you know that this is the section, the area, right where Paul Walker would have gotten pulled over. How awesome is that? And I'm telling you, it just happened through happenstance. I just drove through and I was like, hey, wait a minute, this is the section. This is the area where that happened. That is so cool that I found it by, by happenstance. 
awesome. Okay guys, that was the building that I was trying to show you back there on Valencia, but you can barely see it nowadays because of all the, the trees that are overgrown and plus it, be, it being night doesn't help. But from here, it's a perfect, perfect shot. But there it is. That's exactly the building I wanted to show you. And funny enough, right, right next door is the Quality Cafe from Training Day, Gone in 60 Seconds, and from Catch Me If You Can. And another funny thing that I noticed is right there, those blue, the blue, um, light right there that says president's the president motel or president the one from um, the rsx when it's escaping so that's so cool because it's right there down the street i had no idea how close the two were so it, it was two two uh, just by chance things i was looking for a quality cafe which is right there about a block that way and as i was driving i passed it and i came here and I realized, wait a minute, this is the spot where they pull Paul Walker over. And then right now, as I was as I was making this video, I saw the blue lights and I said, hey, wait a minute, I, that looks familiar. And sure enough, it's the President's Motel building. That is so cool, man. to Terminal Island in my final final filming location for the Fast and the Furious and hands down this has got to be the hardest most difficult location I've ever found like not just because of not just because finding it was difficult but because parking correctly and and trying to avoid traffic and actually getting the angles down were incredibly incredibly difficult but nevertheless we found it and a hero came actually I thought we were done like I didn't think I was gonna be able to line up anything but somebody came and actually split up traffic as you can see right behind me is the railroad crossing and there were there's a line of freight trucks here going as far as the eye can see in both directions and they were taking up this intersection which stopped me from getting the the, the angles that i needed to and thankfully somebody came right as i came and i found this parking spot on this side and actually split up the traffic which made my job a whole lot easier and by the way don't mind the hair it's been a long day and oh, and i know i said in my last video that i would try to clean up a lot better but just a long day finding all this stuff just my hair went all over the place and i'm red from the sun but nevertheless i'm here and that's beside the point so let's check it out let's see let's line up these shots and let's see how this comes out because i'm super excited to show you guys let's take a look right behind me are the railroad tracks where the train would have been coming from and ends up at this intersection right behind me these would have been the tracks that the uh, supra and uh the charger nearly nearly have a miss with the train it would have been right here okay, so as the scene starts brian and dom start way down that way and they work their way up this way as they come up this way that tra these train arms come down and the train itself would have been coming from this particular direction right here coming this way and the reason i know that it's there that it's this particular direction is because in the movie there's an actual pov shot up from the train itself and it's something to about this effect something about there and you can tell because i can line up the shot with this little concrete island this little miniature one holding the um the uh train signal and of course you can see this curb right here where those gentlemen are standing it slopes down and the railroad track splits into two and you can see it just something about this effect now in the background that bridge there fun fact is the bridge that nicholas cage jumps eleanor over the the ambulance and also that's the same bridge that is used in charlie's angels with the thin man where he gets knocked off with the um, formula one cars that's the same bridge, Terminal Island Bridge. It's, it's pretty cool, fun fact, you know? But yeah, here we are. Okay, so right here is where the trailer would have been coming out, and this is where Dom would have had the accident. And the reason I know this 
is because not only is this the only driveway that has space to accommodate a trailer, as opposed to that one right there, which has nothing behind it, but in the shot, the proximity of the, of the um, stoplight is pretty close to the camera. So that's how I know for a fact that this is the area where that crash happened. Now, where the charger ends up tumbling and they make their final stop is way down that way. Also, I wanted to point out something really funny. They use, I guess, two different takes because as they're cruising down this way to where Dom hits the, um, the truck, when Brian realizes that the truck is there, it cuts back and forth between the two and you can see them pass this street again coming this way. They used two takes, I guess, and spliced them together to make it seem as if though that they that, that that it's the same mm -hmm. moment in time when it really isn't. Okay, so as the charger is is rolling and tumbling its way here, you can just make out this egg-shaped silo on the far corner of the frame. As well as in a split second, you can definitely make this out too, this little driveway or whatever this used to be once upon a time. And it keeps tumbling and it comes toward the camera and that's when we cut and the charger will finally come to rest somewhere right here in this general area and the reason I know this is because Brian when he comes to a stop and he does the turn on his Supra he ends up like this and you can see that little uh, turn uh, I guess I would be left arrow right here in the shot of the movie He runs this way, and in the background, you can definitely see where this concrete island starts. Jump! That's how I know for a fact that the charger was somewhere in like this vicinity, roughly. Also in the background, you can definitely make out the street lamp and that intersection right there which would have been where after Brian hands uh, Toretto the keys for the chart for the uh, not the charger I'm sorry for the Supra they would have he would have taken off that way right where that truck is turning that's where uh, Dom would have gone and then Paul would have been seen walking this way toward the sirens where the movie would have ended and of course in the background you would have seen those uh, white the white pipes that used to run along right here they used to run along right here and the reason I know this too is because there are the the um, the uh, bases for them let's see if I can get this to focus yeah there's the bases for what used to be that industrial uh, piping and it used to run along this whole area right here so how awesome is that I found it Terminal Island a royal royal pain in the ass to find but totally worth it I made it out here all right, guys, so yeah, that concludes Fast and the Furious Filming Locations Part 2. Uh, like I said, Terminal Island is a, a royal, royal pain in the ass to, to do and to come and see, man, because this is just not a visitor-friendly place, man. I'll tell you that right now. But I'm glad we came out. Here it is, you know, right where Dom takes off with the Supra, hangs the left. How awesome that I made it out here. Right here, where the Charger would have came to rest. How cool, man. I'm so glad I made it out here, like I said. And... If you guys are planning to come out here to Terminal Island, just just get ready to spend a good amount of time here because it is very difficult to navigate and it is very hard to get here. And once you're here, like it's just parking is very, very, very difficult to find because it's non-existent. Like I said, absolutely non-existent. You have to kind of uh, wing it a little bit. But definitely come out here if you're a big Fast and the Furious fan because it's worth seeing. So check that out. I can't believe I'm here. Yo! But yeah, it's it's uh it's pretty cool, you know, to be out here and uh, to see the Fast and the Furious film and look in the final one, you know. So I put the action camera up, and I'm gonna go down the street where the race would have taken place. And looking at this side that I didn't come through, I don't think that this was where they started because they're at a stoplight, and there's definitely no stoplights here. So I really doubt this is where it started. 
But nevertheless, we're gonna go down and I'm gonna pass the train tracks where they uh, would have almost hit the train. So let's go do it. So right here, so it would have been right here where they would have had their close call. And they would have jumped this right here. There it is. Now the charger would have tumbled all this way all this way over here. Now you see what I'm talking about, how far it was, and would have ended up right here. The Supra would have been there, and then he would have taken off this way. 